G'day and welcome to another edition of the Advocate Footy Wrap. We're here at Girdlestone Park in the East Devonport Club Rooms with Young Gun Brady Stubbs. How are you, sir? Good, mate. How are you? Well, thank you. Brad, what, uh, welcome to. What are you wearing? We're inside. Uh, it's bloody cold, mate. <laughs> Winter. If you, didn't, if you didn't go to the footy on the weekend and you weren't cold, then there's something wrong with you. It was, uh, it was Arctic like conditions on Saturday, and uh, I get the feeling there's a, there's a bit more to come during the week as well. So, rug up again this Saturday, people. You're going to fire away with a few questions uh, to our special guest. Certainly do, Brady. Brady, you've uh, obviously had a, great, had a great game on the weekend and uh, in enjoying the return back to East Devonport this year? Yeah, definitely, mate. It's been excellent under Ned and, um, and after all the boys coming back from Turner's Beach that left the club yeah. and, and saw the return of other players, uh, it's good to get a few wins on the board. Yeah, and, yeah I'm definitely enjoying some um, success here at the moment. Yeah. Who would have thought, Brady? I certainly didn't. Um, and I'll put my hand up. I haven't tipped East Devonport once I this mean, season I, yet. I, I think Ned told me about that on Saturday, too. I, I think next time I see Ned, he's, uh, he's going to let me know. But three wins in a row, uh, you're sitting three and two. You're actually two games inside the uh, the top five, which is obviously top five this year's is will play finals. How's the vibe around the club? It must be absolutely electric at the moment. Yeah, the vibe's been good since the start of pre-season, really. Look, um, sort of, you know, our reserves and our under 18s are struggling a little bit, but the sort of the 25 or 26 that we've been getting consistently over the pre-season and now um, the vibe's continued right through, even like losing the first two games and then sort of uh, winning the last three. Yeah, the vibe's been excellent. Everyone's up and about getting to training and, and doing all the right things. So, um, yeah, the vibe's excellent. And obviously, uh, this week, they have a much harder task this week against Olves, and you, you know, you've, you've come up against three of the bottom teams. So uh, for the for your three wins, but Holston this week they they actually smacked Smith in the last week. They're going to be a, a much tougher proposition, aren't they? They are. They are definitely uh, sort of um, we've stood over the game, sort of confident and yep. and you know believing that we can win. Um, we're going to every game this year doing that, I think. And and if as long as we keep doing that and keeping positive and playing by the game plan, I don't see why we couldn't knock off a sort of top side. Okay. And, uh, you know, yeah. Now we all know by Ned's uh, remarkable record, obviously the show, three flags, and he, he had a great period there with Devonport in the he early did, 2000s, yeah. just couldn't quite get past Bernie, though he's uh, mm. the only team he couldn't beat, but what makes him a good coach? We all know he, he gets a lot of wins, but what actually makes him a good coach as a, as a player? Yeah, um, yeah he's an ex excellent tactician, uh, sort of every game that we've gone into the last three weeks has been a different uh, tactical way of going about it um, each, each team that we play. So uh, this week I suppose um, it's going to be different than last week mm. um, and so and he knows, it seems to know every play inside and out. Yeah, like, I was about to say, yeah. From the opposition, uh, he knows their number, their age, the, their position. Like, he's, um, yeah, he's excellent like that and, and just the way that he speaks and motivates just really gets you up and about ready to play on a Saturday. Mm. That's yeah, that's about it. That's about it. No, well said. Um, we'll move on to the other games, and then we'll get to some silly questions with, with Brady a little bit on uh, a little bit later. But first game, I'm heading down to Smithton down the circular head to watch the two winless sides of the year, Bernie and, and Smithton. Obviously, I'm looking forward to it. It may, it may not be the prettiest game to watch, but uh, plenty on the line for these two. Clubs. Oh, look, I think this, this this will be this will be hard for both coaches will be really revving their blokes up in the change room before the match, knowing that. Uh, yeah, they can they can get their first win for the season. I think Andrew Bacon. I think I think Bernie showed uh, there on um, against Penguin. I think they showed little glimpses of yeah, what they can do. Yeah, they yeah. I mean, kicked five goals in a row. Uh, Smith and I think uh, yeah from the from the game I've seen this year, I, they certainly go in hard and have a crack. I, I don't think anyone can deny them that. But uh, I, I think down there at Smith and I think they have a that's a reasonable home advantage for them and I think I think the Saint is uh, they could be rocking circle head on Saturday night with a win I think. You leaning Smithton way too Brady? Just yeah um, leaning Smithton way I've sort of got first game back last week against Smithton I got to watch the Bernie game and yeah. um, I reckon Smithton down there just got the edge on him. Yeah my thoughts exactly look let's not go into this game too much but we would, we would all assume that Winner will keep the uh, the juggernaut rolling on against Penguin although it's in, uh, at Pertec Oval. Yeah I, yeah, I think Winner uh, yeah, they're just they're doing enough at the moment they'll I'll, uh, they should win this game, but uh, I was talking to Daniel Loach from Penguin last last uh, night, who uh, got three votes in, in his match against Bernie. And look, he he, he thinks that the Blues, the two Blues, at full strength, they can certainly trouble the top teams. He said they're not they're not there just making up the numbers in the finals. I think they can really pick pick off some uh, big scalps by the end of the year. So uh, look, uh, not quite yet. I think maybe yeah. towards later on the year, when you might be resting some players. But I think I think we need to. Uh, Comfortably account for the uh, for the two blues here. Cats too good for uh, the two blues, Brady. Yeah, definitely, mate. I haven't seen um, either of size play yet, but just on paper, I reckon we just look too good. Yeah, fair call. Um, final game. We obviously, I've already touched on your game, the Olveston Devonport Latrobe, Coley. 
interesting game. Devonport won obviously the first week and coming off four losses. Yep. Latrobe uh, been pretty consistent this year. Yeah, look, watching watching Devonport. I haven't, haven't watched Latrobe yet this year, but watching Devonport last week, uh, certainly in the first quarter, I think Brody that they had plenty of run, didn't they? Yeah, definitely. They, yeah. they really move out. But I think the East Devonport boys just had uh, a bit slightly more experience in their team, slightly more seasoned seasoned bodies. I think it just slightly started to wear Devonport down a bit in the conditions. So. Uh, Devonport really need big games for your, your Clementses and your Clint Matthews, those sort of blokes, Flannery's to, mm. to be in with a sniff. But I think uh, I think Latrobe are just just starting to play some good footy at the moment. I think uh, they should win reasonably comfortably. I think we I think we both agree with that. Let's move on to the uh, the silly questions, the sit ups. Mm. Coley, or uh, you got the first one for Brady. Brady Stubbs, who's the most annoying on, when you get on that bus to Swifton? Who's the, <laughs> who's the most annoying on that bus trip? Who don't you want to sit next to? Uh, Probably the big guy that kicked the winning goal on the weekend. Kenneth, Kenneth, Kenneth Davis, oh, yeah. He's, um, what's yeah, wrong with Kenneth? Everyone sort of steers clear of him. Um, he sort of <laughs> talks a little bit of rubbish here and there, but um, yeah, it can be a bit annoying sometimes. Uh, who spends the most time in front of the mirror before you run out? Now, off camera, you said it was yourself. You, you, you <laughs> didn't want to stitch up yourself. <laughs> you didn't want to stitch yourself up, so uh, who was it? Um, probably Nathan Gore. I think I might have seen him with a makeup bag in there a couple of times. Oh, 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 he had a good game on big, Saturday, too. He even puts a bit of blonde in his hair to hide the orange, so it's pretty oh, oh, That's big straw. Yeah, definitely. Big straw. <laughs> good. Straw for kisses. Okay, yeah, yeah. You're up. And finally, who who can't do anything wrong by Dale Perry? If, if, he, if this bloke gives away a 50 million pound on the field, will not get dragged. Used to be Dutch. Oh, used to be Josh no, Holland just tried. Right. Oh, yeah. I would have said it was Nathan Appleby. Um, Apples? Yeah, Apples sort of can't do anything wrong. He seems to know everything before everyone else. Uh, okay. What's going on around the club? So I reckon Nathan's got Ned in his back pocket. <laughs> good work, Apples. Uh, now stay with us, Brady. We're about to wrap up. We've got a good call, bad call. You're not involved, but please, uh, if you've got any other different views, let us know. Right. Coley, good call, bad call. We got the new ball today. Yeah, right up. Devonport's loss in the TSL to reigning premiers North Launceston was the reality check they needed. Good call, bad call. Uh, yeah, yeah, good call, good call. I don't think, uh, I think they, they've, they've had a run of games there. They're, they're three wins. They've been against teams that are around that sort of might qualify for finals. Probably probably won't, you know, Hobart City's Tigers, Launceston's. So, you know, those three wins certainly got them back on track after the big loss to Bernie. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think I think North Launceston showed. I think North Launceston probably wanted to make a statement as well this, that game. Mm. I think, you know, uh, you know Denport are going, okay, let's just... Let's just show who's the who's the reigning premiers in this competition. And uh, I'll, yeah, look, I, th I think the loss the loss will do them good. I think they'll they'll find out they'll would have found out more from that loss where they actually where they are in the pecking order. I think than yeah. probably the three wins they've they've had this season. Jordan, the return delivery to you, mate. Yeah. The uh, decision on Stephen May from the Gold Coast to get three weeks of the tribunal was an absolute disgrace. Good call, bad call. Absolute disgrace. Great call. Um, couldn't have said it better. My call. I just, I, I find it hard to believe that Luke Hodge, off the play, blatantly elbows a little bloke in the face, um, can get the same week as, as a guy who was trying to protect the ball um, and, and win the ball. Now, now, the AFL was trying to say that he, he should have gone the ball rather than the man, but to go to the ball, he had to get rid of the man first. So, um, yeah, I, 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 did ha I had very little faith in the AFL tribunal system before Tuesday, but um, that the little, very little bit I had was, has all been, has all gone, because, yeah, and, and, and even Lewis to get two weeks, I, I thought that was a stretch. I yeah. thought he should have got three too, but yeah. anyway. That's something, if that were on footy field, Brady, happened and you know, Dale, Dale saw that you didn't really you know, do everything possible to get the ball, well, you know, he, he wouldn't be happy with that, would he? No, I wouldn't have thought so. I had the same opinion as Jordan. Yeah, I, don't think, I think it was a poor call. Very poor. Well, that's it. Thanks for joining mm. us today, Brady. Best of luck on the weekend against the Robins. Um, and for all the viewers out there, all 20, 30 of you, maybe. I think we're up to about 30 now, Jordan. Yeah, I think we're, we're starting to grow. We're slowly building. Dale Perry's watching. That's good. <laughs> we'll catch you again next week. Cheers.